Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. My tone is not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Something's not right. Get out, enjoy some time with the family on this beautiful day. There won't be anything quite like it again. If we stop the first shark now, we can stop them all. Time travel's risky. If we do it right, we can reset everything back to the way it should be. Hey, Matt, it's Brendan. I'm calling from America, from Hollyweird. And um, I'm just going to update you on uh, Sharknado and all that fun stuff that, you know, I think everyone was into for a hot minute. Maybe it was six years. I don't know. I went by too fast. Anyways, call me back uh, whenever you can. And, yeah, cool. On the line, we have Brendan Patrizzo talking to us. From where are you talking to us from, Brendan? Oh, from Glendale. It's it's right next to Hollywood, so we'll just say L.A. If you're in London, it would be the equivalent to... Essex? Uh, no, it'd be closer. Um, if you're in Camden, and like... I'm trying to think geography-wise. It's been like three years since I've been. Um, okay, let's say you're in Camden, and you're like 45 minutes away, but you're still in the city. Right, okay, so you're in the equivalent of Leicester then. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that would do. So, yeah, I mean, I'm going to have to start off going downhill for the beginning of this podcast. Basically, we've been doing a running thing for the last week or so. Unfortunately, it's the sad death of Burt Reynolds. It is, it is, it is, it is. I loved Burt Reynolds and Boogie Nights. He was really good. Everybody talks about bloody Boogie Nights. Let it go. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly... I think that was the one movie that actually like comes to mind that he's in. I'm, I'm really bad at this stuff when it comes to like actors and, and stuff that they've done. I, I'm honestly like awful at it, but I do remember his character very, very well from that movie, and I, I do like it. I'm a huge Paul Thomas Anderson fan, so I enjoyed it very well. And there's also Smokey and the Bandit. Yes, he was good in that. I've only seen the trailer, but, you know, I enjoyed the trailer. <laughs> right, here we go. <laughs> All right. I said to myself years ago I would sort of try and distance myself away from this franchise, but unfortunately, Brendan, <laughs> I kind of have like to. You did a great job. Mm. Astonishingly good filmmaking, I will say, Brendan, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's just a concept. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. So, obviously, Sharknado, it being the last Sharknado, which I don't believe, I think they'll keep going, Brendan. I can literally tell you from the actual meetings afterwards, it is dead, we killed it, it's dead, gone forever, cross my heart, hope to die, it's over. Just like Cher said, you know, like, four years ago on her tour, she's like, I'm done, I'm never touring again, it's the end, I'm never doing this again. <laughs> so, obviously, we're talking about the latest instalment, It's About Time. Mm -hmm. When I heard about this, I thought they were trying to make a play on the fact that it was about time on the franchise being the end of it. Unfortunately, I then discover that for some reason, I don't know how this works, they've basically put together sharks, tornadoes, and time travel. Oh, yes. Because that's a great bundle of things to <laughs> oh, yeah. bring together. Oh, yeah. It's like, it's like you take the greatest things in the world and then mix them into one and then chop it down to 90 minutes and... You get, you get this. Yeah. So, with regards to the plot line, Brendan, what's the general plot line surrounding the film? It has a plot. <laughs> Wait, really? <laughs> well, the basic concept is, when you boil it down, <laughs> this guy has to get his son back, who has been traveling through time, through these different vortexes. That is the basic, basic concept. So, if you're watching it for the plot... It's about them going back in time to save his son. That's it. That is it. Like, don't overthink it. That's the basic, the basic idea. As a franchise, it's it's what six, seven movies. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, six of them. Six of them. There's six of them, but there's that one like spin-off film, which is like Sharknado: Heart of Sharkness, 
And then there's that one documentary that they did. So, like, theoretically, there's six narrative Sharknado films, one fake documentary spinoff, and then one actual documentary. Brendan, I am going to make it the most easiest question of them all before I go into the actual <laughs> film itself, right? Okay. And this is the one question, the one question that I've been waiting to ask somebody who was in Sharknado. <laughs> right? <laughs> go for it. Why on earth is it bloody popular? You know, I don't know. Um, I've been a fan of of Asylum since 2006 and it's like I don't I don't know I mean I think it just happened at the right time it was literally a whole thing of just like when it happened I guess people were like it's so crazy I honestly think it just happened at the right time and then it was kind of like oh my god they're actually making another one are they serious and then people would watch it and they would just kind of keep being like that. And, you know, you would get these crazy cameos and it'd be like, oh, my God, they actually did this. So I think that's what happened is people were like, oh, my God, what is this movie? And then, you know, then when the second one happened, it's, oh, my God, they actually did this. And then the third one, it's like, oh, my God. And then they just kept going on and on. And how ridiculous can we get? And I think I think that's what happened. That's my personal take on it. Why? Well, I mean, you're playing Hologram Gill. I'm in this one a few different times. I'm Hologram Gill, but I'm also eaten on the beach. But IMDb wouldn't let me credit myself as that. I don't know why, so I have beef with them now. But I'm also eaten on the beach. Here we go. How on earth did you get eaten on the beach? <laughs> <laughs> it was supposed to be something different. We came up with a concept. It was supposed to be a swordfish kills me, but they changed it in post, and a shark falls on my head. And then I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually a conversation right now. Yeah, a shark fell mm, on my head. Mm. We're going there, Brendan. Let's do it. Yeah, of course. So, I mean, obviously, I say the main cast are back. They are back, let's be honest. <laughs> Ian Zerwing, Tara Reid's back, obviously. Mm-hmm. And most of the people from the first film, it, it, is, it is a lot to do with the first film, mm-hmm. which is, I suppose, clever in a way. They wrapped it up pretty well, I have to say. Like, to wrap up a franchise, like, they they did a very good job with with that. Mm. Because, obviously, you, you've you been part of the franchise, you know, as sort of in the back, if, that, if that's fair, I would a, say. A yeah. little bit, mm. kind of. I was in the third one. I worked on that when they were in D.C., when I used to live in D.C. Mm. So, like, I've, I've been, you know, watching from the sidelines. Mm. <laughs> What was it like working with the cast and crew on set? Which film? The third one or the sixth one? Either. Well, let's start with the third one. Um, it was a lot of fun. It was the first film I ever did. And it was kind of like, oh my god, this is so cool. Like, I'm working with the studio that I want to start out with. This is amazing. And then, you know, fast forward to, when was it? March of this year. And it was like, I'd already done like four or five films at the Asylum, so I was used to it by that point. And it was kind of like, Oh my god, this is great. Oh, I'm very tired. Oh, it's it's stressful. But it's fun. <laughs> but it's stressful. <laughs> and I have no sleep. It was a lot of fun. It's one of those things where you look back on it, and you're like, oh my god, I had a lot of fun, let's do it again. And then, I'm sure if you do it again in the moment, you're like, oh, why did I do this? And then, it's kind of that cycle. But I had a lot of fun. It was crazy. It was stressful. It was very tiring. But it was, in the end rewarding and a lot of fun going back to your point about why why it's so successful and about the fact it was the right time to sort of not slag off hollywood in a way but i mean there's so many films that are just sort of generic shooting films or they're generic romance stories or they're generic stuff is it one of those things whereby it's that bonkers an idea that it becomes its its own sort of thing if that makes sense basically Mm. basically i think so that it's like it's so crazy that it's just like its own thing and you know it's like yeah you could watch i don't know one of the jason Bourne movies on tv or you could watch someone killing sharks in a tornado with a chainsaw for you know two hours and you know you decide which one sounds more fun i must admit actually killing chainsaws in a tornado (laughs) (laughs) this sound this sound a bit more you know Interesting. Like, think about it if you're at a party or you're, like, drunk with friends. Like, 
what sounds more exciting? What at the end of the day, what do you think you'll remember more? Yeah, like you might enjoy the, you know, Jason Bourne thing, but you'll probably have a more memorable experience watching sharks, you know, getting killed with a chainsaw. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's let's talk about another sort of thing that we can mention in, I suppose, <laughs> this kind of this kind of type of film, The Room. Okay. The Room was a good film because it's so hilariously bad. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to think of another one, and I can't. <laughs> Barbarella. Barbarella's a fantastic film, Brendan. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, if you think about it, like, if you think about it, every time she crashes on a planet, she has sex with someone, for no reason, too. So it's, like, kind of this random, like, what the hell is happening, and it's the basic concept with Sharknado, where you're just like, wait, what the hell? It's, it's kind of that, like, very loosely kind of tied in. Oh, God, you've just compared Barbarella to Sharknado. How on I earth did. have you done that? <laughs> I did. <laughs> I want to say something to the people in Hollywood about this. Don't remake Barbarella. Yes, I agree with that. I mean, you know that Robert Rodriguez wanted to for a hot minute, and he wanted to have Rose McGowan play, uh, play Barbarella, but that didn't work out. Going back to Sharknado... Are there any sort of funny anecdotes you can share about the production of the film? Yes. Let me think. Funny stories from the set of Sharknado. Okay, so the scene where Tara is standing on the boat towards the end, laughing, going like, you know, ah, ha, 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 ha. We had this giant fan, like, right below her that was supposed to be blowing air. No one checked the fan beforehand. So the first take she did, it was mwahaha <laughs> spitting out sand because there was sand at the bottom. And she was a trooper, but it was very funny. It was pretty funny. I'm trying to think what else. What other funny things from the set? Oh my god, I'm blanking on this. This is this is not good. Oh, Gary Busey. Okay, so Gary Busey is a character. I wasn't there when this happened, because I was I think at the production office getting something, but apparently he like barked in someone's ear like a dog. That happened, but he was really cool and funny. Yeah, I can't think of anything funny. I can think of some cool facts about the movie. Mm. So, have you seen the Nun? What is that the 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 new one? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Have you seen the trailer of the Nun? Possibly. Okay. So, fun fact number one of how Sharknado and the Nun are very similar. So in the movie, and I'm not spoiling anything, so there's a scene where they're in this like crypt-like graveyard thing indoors in the Abbey. That was the same set used for Sharknado. So if you've seen Sharknado, it's about time. And you're in the, you know, Merlin's castle. It's the exact same set as the Nun. And the only thing they're missing is Alaska Thunder coming in and out. And then also the, who was it? It was the woman, I forgot her name. She's hilarious in person. It's, it's, it's Deborah Wilson, who played New Brian in the medieval scene. She's the voice of the creepy lady in the trailer for The Nun. And she's the voice of the creepy lady in that room that they filmed Sharknado in. So it's like this really cool how like Sharknado and The Nun tie in together. <laughs> Same people, same sets. Most of the beach stuff that we filmed in Sharknado for the beach attack scene, that was actually shot in Malibu. That was not Santa Monica at all whatsoever. Santa Monica does not have giant, massive cliffs. It has a small one. But that's basically it from what I can think of right now. Well, I do have to ask the question. Unfortunately, I've got okay. to ask it because I'm contractually obliged to. Do it. Obviously, they finished with sharks and tornadoes. Are they thinking of creating a new franchise based on two completely separate entities? <laughs> they aren't. From what I understand, I think sci-fi is trying to go in a different direction and have a different type of feel to it. That's what I think. So I don't think we're going to have crazy like alligators in a hurricane type thing. But that being said, I mean, what? We did six-headed shark attack. I mean, you can always do seven-headed shark attack or eight-headed shark attack. So it's kind of one of those 
we won't really know until all of a sudden it'll just appear on the schedule and it'll just be like, oh my God, we have to make this movie. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they said that Saw, Saw was going to end at the seventh one and we're still bloody going now. <laughs> well, like I like I said before, we're, uh, we're done forever. Yeah. You know, wink, wink. We're never doing this again. It's never going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Give it three years. And I'm sure they'll think of something. Shark. I'm trying to think. Tornado. I'm trying to think of other weather, weather things. Sharkane. You could do that. Yeah. You could do a shark and a hurricane. Or it'd be really fun if you kind of mixed a few different films. Because, like, I know we had, like, if we kind of built a universe. Because we have this Mega Shark movies. So you could do, like, Mega Shark versus Sharknado. And then you could do, like, you know, you could do that. I'm looking around my office for posters for inspiration, but unfortunately I just have Snakes on a Train and Age of the Hobbits, so you could do Sharknado versus a giant snake. <laughs> I don't know. I'm bad with these these crazy movie ideas. What about Piranha? Piranha, that was a sign, wasn't it? Well, it depends. So there's the original Piranha, which is Roger Corman, and there's mm. Piranha 2, which is Roger Corman, but also done by James Cameron before he was fired. Then there's Mega Piranha, which is actually the film that got me into Asylum. That's the movie that I was like, I want to start working here. But that was like 12 years ago. So in theory, like if they did Mega Piranha versus a Sharknado or just another Mega Piranha movie, I would like die of happiness. There you go. It's been greenlit now. <laughs> <sighs> We're going to make another Mega Piranha movie. Ah, yes, I'd love that. I would love every minute of that. But what would probably happen is they'd film it when it was, like, really hot out. Or it'd be, like, really cold. Because, like, even though L.A. is very, very warm and very hot, at night it gets cold. And those morning shoots, when you have to get up at 5 in the morning, it's freezing. (laughs) But it'd be fun. That'd be a fun thing to do. Mm -hmm. Mega Piranha 2. I'm just thinking that they can't really do Star Wars, can they? They can't recreate call it something like Sharkado Wars or something like that. They did mm. kind of, Well, no, that's not Star Wars. That was Avatar. Yeah, I don't think we could do... Mm. I mean, in Sharknado 4, they kind of hinted at it a little mm. bit with the lightsaber chainsaw in the whole Sharknado 4, The Fourth Awakens. Mm. Mm-hmm. Being the film title... Oh, yeah. yeah. So I guess we've already done that. Yeah. It's never fun to repeat yourself, so I guess we're not going to do it again. Always have to be original, you know? Correct me if I'm wrong, it's American, isn't it? It's mostly set in America. Yes, except the fifth one. Mm. The fifth one they won on a world tour. Mm. No reason why they can't do a British one, I suppose. Oh, that'd be fun. <laughs> I would definitely do that. I love England. I would gladly, gladly push for that to happen. Mm. But I think it'd be fun to do, like, a Lifetime movie over in England... And you get, like, Gemma Collins for a day. Mm. That's what I want. I want to do a Lifetime movie with Gemma Collins. Isn't Gemma, Gemma Collins... Where is she from? I think she's from Celebrity Big Brother. Only way is Essex, isn't she? Yes, she's from Essex. You shouldn't know anything about that, Brendan. You're American. <laughs> I'm a fake Brit when I have to be. <laughs> you shouldn't know anything about that. Nobody in America will know who you're talking about unless you Google it. Do you know who Jedward is? They were in Sharknado... Four, three, four, and five. Oh, God, they weren't, were they? Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've never met them, so I can't judge them, but they were, yeah, they're in Sharknado. So there, I know some, I know some things that most Americans don't. Do I get points for that? You probably do. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk a bit about you, Brendan, you yourself. Okay. Why did you want to get into acting? Well... I've actually been thinking about that in general, just like film in general. I I think it started, and I don't know if this is true, but I'm I'm going with this story. Years ago, when I was like five, my uncle was like an extra, like his friend does like extra work. And he was in a movie called Along Came a Spider. And just as background, like, yes, he was prominently in the front. And like, he doesn't do film or anything. And I think as a kid, I was kind of like, in the mentality of, hold my drink, I can do better. I think that's what happened. (laughs) That's what got me into it. And then I know in middle school I did theater, and then I also wanted to do directing and producing. So, like, in that time I was like, I guess I want to kind of do both. And now I'm kind of like, maybe I'll do acting again. (laughs) Like, maybe I'll I'll do do some more acting again. 
because I have been in a few things recently. I've noticed that. Like, I've kind of jumped back into acting accidentally. It's like mm. this weird thing. But what got me into acting, going back to the actual question, is my uncle did it. I was kind of like, hold my drink. I can do it better. And now I'm here. I looked at your, I looked at your IMDb. I have to. Yeah. It's a mess. <laughs> do you know what? I wouldn't say it is. I would not say it actually is. I look at it from the standpoint of it's, it's a bit of everything. It is. Been there, done that experienced it <laughs> mm. but i mean is there anything that, that that you sort of key in to would you say i would say if i had to choose i'd want to say that right now at this moment i'm probably more of a second ad because i've been getting more of those jobs but with that being said right behind it i'd want to be directing I did two short films in the last week. One of them was an accident. It was just one of my really good friends and I, who's my roommate, we were just messing around and we just did a short film. But the other one is actually a concept for Asylum because I want to direct one of their films next year. So I had to film a concept for that. So I guess I'd say at the moment it'd be second AD and just get better at that and then directing. And then I definitely want to try out acting more because I feel like I've neglected it a bit. I haven't really done it and I, I want to do more of it. Well, obviously you're a writer as well. When you're sort of approaching projects, Mm -hmm. exactly how are you making them up, if that makes sense? Oh, boy. All right. Well, I'm on my IMDb, so let's (laughs) let's start with uh, that porno-inspired movie title. For The Ghost Hole Thing, that's a film that I am not satisfied with, and I actually (laughs) am trying to rewrite it starting Sunday. But I kind of pick a cool concept, and it's kind of like, what would be fun to do? Like, what would be fun to make? Or a place where it's like, where do I want to film? Because if you're going to film something, you might as well enjoy the process, and you kind of want to do something where it's like either, where's a cool location that would be fun to film at? Or what's a cool story that hasn't been done before? Or if it has been done before, how can you make it something new? For the Ghost Hole film, it's an idea that I've had since 2009, and... It is that film that I'm never, ever satisfied with it. I did that Ghost Hole short film. It was a hot mess, but it was fun. I have been saying I'm going to redo it. Actually, Anthony, who directed, who's done the entire Sharknado franchise, he gave me a mission starting Sunday. (laughs) I have to write a 100-page screenplay about that film, but I can't agree on a concept, Mm. and I have three days. Mm figure one out and i have 11 different concepts for it or more than that but well okay um, okay brendan <laughs> brendan i am going to help oh so boy. go on give me give me the sort of where you are at the minute with it well i want it to be a ghost story but i don't want it to be like that generic ghost story i want it to have depth i want it to have good character development but the other problem is i'm trying to pull in two ideas at once so there's one location that i might just do a documentary about because I think it's becoming too complicated because I have two different... I have two things where I want to film, but if I mix the story of both of them together, it'll just make it too complicated. So I think that's the problem I'm at. Well, okay. So why not just do a short film of the other location and just focus purely on the main main location? On the main thing? Mm. That's what I think it's coming mm. to. I think I'm going to do a documentary about this one place. A bit like Blair Witch, then. Oh boy, I thought about doing it found footage, but it's also kind of mm. like, I was about to do found footage um, a few months ago, I was going to do, I was going to do a found footage thing, and my really good friend Seth, he and I watched this movie called Hell House LLC, and not only did I love the movie, but I had a mini heart attack, because I was like, oh shit, this has been done before, oh my god, I can't do found footage, and it's in a haunted house, oh my god, I can't do this. <laughs> So Hell House LLC, it beat me to putting out an idea. Their idea is completely different than mine, but location-wise, it's very similar. Hmm. Obviously, you've got the house in Blair Witch, yes. but then I mean, there's yeah. something else, isn't there? Do you think found footage would work? I mean, like, do you think a found footage movie would work, or do you think it's been done to death? I think it's been done to death, but that's just me. Okay. I think once they did VHS, it was pretty much gone by that okay. point because because like vhs although it's a fantastic idea and it's a clever one at that and you know you can get past three films on it you've seen it before 
<laughs> I've seen, yes, I've seen VHS before, or VHS before. There are two found footage movies that are honestly really, really good, mm. in my opinion. The first one being Area 51, and the second one being um, As Above is So Below. Actually, switch it. As Above is So Below is my favorite one, and then right underneath of that like, is Area 51, because I think they do it very, very well. I'm surprised you didn't say Cloverfield. I mean, mm. I like Cloverfield, but everyone knows about Cloverfield. <laughs> <laughs> I liked As Above is So Below because it, it surprised me. It wasn't like a, oh my god, everyone's going to die, this is found footage, you know, like the police found this. This is kind of like a modern day Indiana Jones where, hey, we went exploring. Yes, maybe two people got killed, but it's not really about that. It's kind of about the adventure. Mm. And Area 51 was the same way where it was more about the adventure than it was you know, how can we scare people? Mm. And I thought that was kind of cool. Mm. But going back to your idea. Yes. Mm. Yeah, I'd say I'd say put the mythology in the um, separate location and focus on the main one, which would connect to it somehow. So stay away from found footage, mm. definitely. I think Ghost Hunters has been overdone too, right? Ghost Hunters? Yeah, you know, kind of like the conjuring, like the whole like, oh, we're paranormal experts coming in. <laughs> mm. You're going to have to give me a bit more as to the plotline of Ghost Hole. Well, the original mm. plotline was a mess. The script was nothing like the film, but it's basically like someone goes to make a documentary on this haunted place at Coney Island in New York, and then they go missing, and their friend decides to complete the documentary. That plot has completely changed. It is a completely different film. But the concept of a haunted, haunted house is still there. Mm. I mean... I'll tell you what hasn't been done. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to sort of help me out here. Say, for example, if it's me and you. So, say I'm the main character, I go off to the mm-hmm. house, and then mm-hmm. I disappear. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. You come over. No, that has been done. It's Blair Witch. Which is thinking. Because the person who disappears becomes the inhabitant of the house. So then another person comes in, and they die. The, the first person dies because they become the inhabitant of the house. That's been done as Blair Witch. Hmm. Hmm. <sighs> this is what makes this movie so hard to do. <laughs> can, can I just say, Brendan? Can I just say, you know, because obviously I usually don't do this. I usually don't talk to people about ideas. But this is making fascinating, fascinating listening for anyone who's actually interested in how Hollywood I know, films it's work. Frustrating. Mm. I hope my frustration is mm. emulating across the world right now because mm. it is entirely frustrating to do. Mm. Because a lot of people think, oh, they just yeah, chuck out any old thing. Imagine it's like a one-night stand, but all of a sudden, oh shit, I'm attached. Now I'm in a relationship. <laughs> now I'm just like, I need to make sure this is perfect. <laughs> and now you've dragged me into it, Brendan. I have, but I've been in this longer. <laughs> so I know how to navigate some things. Mm. The making of this film is the most stressful thing in the world, but my goal is to, if I can come up with a script, to film it next year, if it happens. Obviously, you've got to get me an extra role. Now I've just help solve it <laughs> why not you can fly over here you can you can be in it and then you can come to the premiere and you can meet everyone else who does Sharknado <laughs> <laughs> does it have to be a haunted house yes oh. I will disclose one thing it has to be in a haunted house because I saw some interview with um, James Wan and he was like talking about you know okay with horror like write what's scary to you and as a kid I was terrified yet fascinated by like those little haunted house rides that you have at amusement parks like I loved them but I was also terrified to go inside so obviously when I got older like that no longer happens I'm not scared but I thought it'd be really cool you know I was like okay well that's one thing that really hasn't been done like there have only been like five or six movies instead of like 50 (laughs) so it's kind of like it's not entirely original, but it's kind of original, if you get what I'm saying. I've got the answer. Okay, tell me. No. <laughs> no. I'll tell you after the interview, but I won't tell you on the podcast. Okay, perfect. Okay. Because if I tell you, if I tell you it now, and then upload it, someone will, someone someone will nick it. Someone else will hear it. Yeah, someone will hear it. And this, this is, this is borderline clever. I'll call you for ideas. I'll be like, okay, I'm stuck. Here's where I'm at. What do I do? So going back to your acting career, because obviously I have to, and mm-hmm. your career in general, which actors or actresses have been your favourites to work with and why? Oh my goodness. My favourite to work with? Does it have to be with me acting? Not necessarily. Okay. 
my favorite person to work with that I can think of right now was Vivica Fox because she like she was on it and that's what I loved she wanted to know everything and I was like I I love that in someone who's like on point because there are some actors who don't know what's going on and what I understand is that in England actors take themselves places they take themselves to hair and makeup and stuff like that they don't have someone do it for them so Vivica Fox was very much on top of her game she knew exactly what she was doing and I loved that Another really fun person, I would have to say, is an actor. His name is Al. He's in a lot of different films. You might recognize him. He and I did a short film together in New York called Pleasure as Usual. Um, His full name is Al Sapazzania. It's Italian, but I don't know how to pronounce it. And he was great. He was, like, so much fun to work with. In, like, every way. Like, he was really cool. But those are the two. I would say Vivica Fox and Al. But I think... I'm going to digress for a second, but I think the best film that I ever worked on... I didn't know if that was going to be a question, but I have to say, the best film I ever worked on and the best set I ever did was Madonna and the Breakfast Club. Because that was literally a, let's go make a movie. (laughs) It was the, the epitome of, let's just go out and just make a movie and no matter what, it'll turn out fine. And it was the best experience I've ever had. Going back to what you said before about um, acting roles and going back into acting, are there any sort of characters that you would like to try out? Yes. After recently binge-watching American Horror Story, (laughs) my wonderful roommate Seth and I are watching all of the seasons in a row. (laughs) We're in the middle of season four right now. I would love to have a character like Jessica Lange because I am not a good actor and I am not sad to say that but I can do the bitchy roles relatively well. I would love to have a character like Jessica Lange in American Horror Story Coven or Meryl Streep in The Devil Wears Prada. I would love something like that. I'd love a character like that. I'm interested about the Seth bloke. (laughs) He's also an actor. I have two short films, one that might come out if I get approval from Asylum. It might come out, and then he's in this other one I did. He was, like, the first actual friend I had in L.A., and then we became roommates. We met because of our mutual friend, and then all three of us became roommates. And then the mutual friend moved back to New York, but then he decided he's moving back here, apparently. (laughs) But that's a whole other story on its own. Mm. Mm. Well, I'm going to give you a one-minute plug, Brendan. Uh, It's a one-minute plug, two-plug Sharknado. Okay. 30 seconds might do. Um, And anything else you've got coming up? Oh, my goodness. Anything else coming up? I'm starting a film next Thursday. There's a chance I might do another film, which is going to be amazing if I get it. And they might fly me to New Jersey. Fingers crossed that happens. But it'll be at the same time, so I'll be doing two movies at once, which don't ever do, but I'm going to do it. (laughs) And then... I'm so focused on getting this ghost hole thing done. I'll bury it for a few months and then it'll like resurrect itself. And I'm just like, Oh my God, like why? But that's, that's basically it. I have that. And then I have, you know, these other two movies. And then I think, let me just glance at my IMDb if there's anything else. Oh, and then we have Nazi overlord coming out. That's the thing. There's that. And the Madonna movie that's, that's coming up. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Brendan, it's been a pleasure interviewing you. It's been fun. It's been exciting. (laughs) Mm. Thanks very much for your time. Of course. Bye-bye, Brendan.